to flip to uh, the temperature of the soil uh, in conjunction with soil pH. This one? There we go. Yeah. Um, I'm good, I think I'm this good is at a, flipping slides. So, I, you know, I'll kind of let, uh, I have my opinions, but I'd like the, you know, Neil, Allison, Cody, uh, you know, in conjunction with your particular area, uh, soil pH, and then I don't know what it's like in your area, but at my springs are cold and wet and mostly miserable. So what, what do you guys uh, think about uh, that in conjunction with soil temperature and pH? Sure. I'll chime in, Allison, if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, this is commonly why phosphorus in for liquid fertilizers are applied on corn crops in our region. And I'm sure I'm not alone in saying this. Uh, main benefit that we always preach in, in retail is get that crop out of the ground. Uh, phosphorus is needed for, for good early growth and proliferation of the plant, especially when it's cooler. Let's get something done. Let's start growing. And that, this slide speaks to that perfectly. You know, let's get some nutrients out there that are going to move that crop along. Yeah, <laughs> I I have I have seen people seeding in the the spring, putting peas in, maybe maybe some early barley, uh, and there's sn still snow in the trees. Um, the the temperature of that soil <laughs> is is not warm at all. Uh, but it, it, it at that point it's a logistics issue and just trying to get stuff done in a in a short amount of time. Um, Here. so so yeah, it, the phosphorus availability thing. Um, Cold soils not being available, see it see it quite often, and and that that uh, having something there to to give that that plant that shot that that availability of some some uh, plant available phosphorus is, is definitely going to be beneficial. And and when you start compounding this with the uh, uh, soil pH issues and it not being available either because of pH, yeah, you, you could really be running into some some temporal deficiencies, I guess, uh, at certain points throughout the growing season. Yeah, you get a one-two punch. You get some high pH and some low temperatures. That's a recipe for some challenging times. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So, so my uh, my keen observation and listening skills are uh, are telling me here that <clears throat> to get the crop off to the right start and really push uh, um, push it through some very stressful periods. And if we have still chemical factors, nutrient uh, baseline nutrition. Uh, our soil test, as an example, telling us. So there's some of the things that are reported on a soil test that a lot of folks will take into consideration when they're building a fertility plan. But when we just take the things that are real, like the soil temperature and the soil pH alone, um, sometimes the reported measures on a soil test can be relatively skewed uh, if we apply these factors in. So we may indeed have enough copper to grow that crop uh, for a growing season, or we may indeed have enough uh, zinc to grow that crop or even phosphorus believe it or not not all soil tests in western canada are deathly deficient in phosphorus um, but let's say you know we've got a soil test there's enough nutrient but when we apply these just these two factors alone we haven't even dived into the rest um, all of a sudden that early critical growth for phosphorus that need for phosphorus and copper for proper root development to set that root architecture for later in the growing season is severely compromised so um just, you know, my uh, <laughs> observation listening skills in check here, folks. 